Hey guys, welcome back. In this video, I'm going to show you how to deform objects using the deformation tools, uh, and more specifically, the nonlinear deformation tools found here in the deform um, menu. We're going to bend. We're going to use, in fact, here they are. Uh, if you go to the deform menu under nonlinear, uh, we're going to do a bend, a flare, sign, squash, twist, and wave. There's six of them. And I've got five different boxes here and a floor. These boxes have been subdivided. Uh, let me fact, let me zoom in. Uh, one on the X, I believe I still have it here. One, 24, and two. Two, 24, and 20. So two on the X, uh, two on the Z, and then 24 on the Y. Uh, they're all the same. And we need those subdivisions because we need subdivisions. We need the geometry for this to work. Uh, and now I've got a plane uh, subdivided into 50 by 50. And so let's go ahead and get started. We'll start by selecting this one. And I'm going to hit F and applying a bend uh, deformer. So I'm going to go to deform, nonlinear, bend. And so that creates a bend tool, a bend handle. There it is. And here in the attribute editor, we've got, we've selected, we have selected this bend handle. Here it is. Here's the um, attributes for that bend handle. We, we, we don't have the geometry selected. We're not messing with the geometry. The geometry is reacting to the handle, to the deformer. And so here we go. The curvature is, of course, how curved we have it in the x and the uh, in the negative and positive x and also the low bound and high bound you'll see this low bound and high bound on almost all of them the low bound is how low from the bottom that um, the former is activated for example if i have no if i have zero on the low bound this will only deform the top part. <clears throat> and I go back all the way to the bottom. And then this one, uh, I should put a negative one. And this one is the high bound. Uh, it works exactly the same, uh, but for the top part. In other words, if I wanted to only curve the bottom part, um, I can get that high bound to zero and it's not affecting the top part. I'm going to set it back to one so that both the top and the bottom are affected. Uh, and you can see guys that I, I don't have the geometry selected. I have this bend handle selected. And if I move that handle, the geometry is just going along for the ride. So I'm gonna undo that. If I go here, you can see the, how it's affecting the geometry. Okay, uh, you can also rotate this uh, and you can see how it's bending that structure undo. Let's move on to the next one, uh, deform nonlinear flare. When we first start out, you'll see that it doesn't take any, uh, it doesn't take any effect. So here are the options in the attribute editor. We have the flare handle selected, not the geometry. The geometry is being affected by the handle. So start flare in the X, there it is at the bottom. On the Z, there it is at the bottom or at the top end. So we have a lot of flexibility on what we wanna do. Uh, and then the curvature is from the top to the bottom. If we wanna go fat or skinny, um, I hope that you can see uh, how powerful this is and uh, maybe how it can help you model some things. Uh, for example, this could be the top of a building, right? Uh, and, and the low bound, the high bound, the low, the low bound is how much of the bottom is affected. There it is. See, there's a building with the uh, roof top and the high bound this high bound right there so how how much of it is affected i'm going to put it right at one and negative one 
and then the curvature. You can go in or out, not a big deal. The next one is the sign. This is pretty cool. The sign, again, when you apply it, it there seems to be no change. But uh, once you start playing with the uh, attributes for the sign handle, uh, the amplitude is how much of it, how powerful is that wave. The wavelength is up and down, how big or small that wavelength is. And so I'm going to leave it to about there. And then the offset is the travel, how, how that wave travels, for example, like that. Uh, the drop off and the low bound and the high bound. Now, this guys, I haven't mentioned it, but you know that all of these properties are animatable. You can animate any of these properties. I'm going to do one uh, just to show you. I have my playhead at frame one and the offset is at 1.9. I'm going to right click on it set a key at frame one i'm going to go to all the way up to 120 and i am going to move this a couple times all the way to there um, since i had auto keyframe turned on it automatically created a keyframe at 120. so if i hit play um, that is a snake you know slithering across the floor something in the wind uh, a piece of rope in the wind or whatever um, you can see how easily that is that's the sign I'm gonna stop this go back to frame one and let's move on to the um, the other one go to deform nonlinear squash and stretch this is a squash and stretch uh, very very cool for any type of uh, animation The factor is at zero, but it's so cool that it's just squash and stretch, squash, and that's it, squash and stretch. Uh, there is a maximum expand position. There's a st smoothness. Uh, there's uh, the low end, and uh, this just works. This just works as is, not a big deal, but we have some, some more properties and again you can definitely animate any of these properties let's move on to the next one go to deform nonlinear twist nonlinear twist is from the start uh, from the bottom we're going to twist it we can go to the x i mean we could go to the negative we could go to the positive uh, we could go from the top, we could go X and negative and positive, uh, and then the low bound and high bound. Again, you've, you guys know about this. The low bound, you can, you can see that that low bound come up. Uh, there we go. So you can twist anything um, and you can add multiple uh, you can add multiple um, deformers at once. Let's go ahead and add another one here to this um, squash and stretch. And we'll add another one. We'll add the twist. And let's say that uh, we'll start with this. And it still has that squash and stretch handle. Let's see if it still works. It's a factor. And look, it still works with two deformers on there. So it's very, very powerful. And plus, you can use it to animate and you can use it to model both things. Uh, for example, I can use this to uh, model some rebar. This is the bend tool. This is the flare, the sign. This is the squash. And this is the twist. Now the last one I'm gonna do on the floor because it's a little bit easier to do. Uh, let's go to deform, nonlinear, and let's hit that wave. And then you see this up here. This, the wave handle. Uh, this wave, the amplitude is how high, 
boom, there it is. I'm just gonna keep it a little bit low, just so you can see the effect. And the wavelength is how, um, this way, how wide it is. I can make it very, very short like this. And then the offset is, of course, the direction. And I can go out or in. And then the drop off minus radius is this. It's kind of like the low end and high end. How much of it are you going to affect? If you want to affect just that or the whole thing. Uh, and let's, uh, let's go ahead and animate. I'm going to take off auto keyframe. Turn that off so that we can animate this wave. So I'm on frame one and I am going to animate the offset. Set key, go to 120 and move that offset from 0.9 all the way to six and then just hit set key. See what happens. And there it is. And then you might say, well, that doesn't seem like I'm ever going to use that wave. I mean, it's possible, but let's say that you've got, you know, um, something that you need to do a wave. Let's go ahead and fix this. Uh, I am going to the wavelength. Let's bring it back down a little bit, the amplitude. And then I am going to move this wave. I'm going to move this wave way out here. And I am going the max radius. I'm gonna. I want to uh, be able to cover the entire thing. The wavelength. I'm gonna make it a little bit bigger. And just with those brief little moves, if, if I hit play, check out that wave. Uh, this could be I don't know a, a paper or a cloth or a cape or something waving in the wind. A flag. Uh, if you see this from another angle like this. This could be a flag, this could be anything waving in the wind. So very, very powerful. These are the deformers, the nonlinear deformers uh, that you can find here in the deform menu. Nonlinear, bend, flare, sign, squash, twist, and wave. Very, very uh, cool. Uh, and again, you can use them for modeling. Let's say that you've modeled this rebar. You don't want that twist handle to affect it anymore. You don't want it to affect it anymore. So you select the geometry. You go to edit, delete by type history. And it, de it deletes the the twist handle. This is the other one for we used for this one. If I delete this one, just I hit delete, it all that twist goes away. Boom. It it just goes away. So, but if I want to keep the effect, if I want to keep the effect of this sign right there, um, I can instead grab the geometry, edit, delete by type history, or if I do all all by type history it gets rid of all of them and there we go everything is there there is no more deformers uh, everything is geometry not being deformed at all and there it is hey guys i hope that you've liked this video if you like the video go ahead and hit the like button and subscribe and i will see you on the next one thank you guys